everyone, I'm Shainti back with another episode of Shainti Finance. Last year for Valentine's Day, I did six different videos. Um, there was two oil pastels, one watercolor, one card making tutorial, and a couple of uh, acrylic paintings that I did on the love theme basis and you know around Valentine's Day. Um, so obviously I have to continue the tradition. So this year I present you the first painting for Valentine's Day. This is a very easy beginner's acrylic painting and I'm going to walk you step by step through the process and I'm also going to share a lot of different ideas in, way in which uh, you can modify this painting and uh, make it your unique painting. And uh, to make it easier for you, I am even sharing a silhouette traceable with you and it will be linked down in the video description with all the materials that I've used in this painting. I'm starting this painting with a basic sketch on where I want to put the rocks and where the waterfall will go. Obviously, the entire background will be waterfall, but in the front, I'm going to put some rocks and just want to place the visual elements and uh, make sure that uh, I have the right positioning. It's just a pure basic sketch, nothing much to do. And then I'm going to start putting a lot of colors in the background. Now you will see me putting a lot of unusual colors in the background at the beginning. What the colors that I'm using here are prism violet. You can use any kind of purple or violet that you have in hand. Um, I also am putting a lot of raw umber. I'm mixing in lots of cobalt blue, some amount of uh, halo green, it, and uh, after all of that i added a little bit of black also here and there just to darken the entire thing and it just seems like a very unusual mix of colors very uh, something that you would not see in a waterfall right these are not uh, colors uh, that you see in waterfall but i'm i'm also using some amount of uh, turquoise color it's uh, i think the color is called like a aqua blue or aqua green or something like that so uh, these uh, colors initially it would look like there's too much of colors too much of vibrancy of colors but the overall idea behind putting so much of colors is that i'm going to go with a lot of white over these and uh, uh, and because of the white a lot of these colors will eventually fade out and it will all turn into a gray white mixture but depending on the what the background color initially was the white uh, it, some of it will peep through behind the white and that will create a very interesting background coming through the waterfalls. Uh, you at, at this point probably it just looks like a hot mess but it will make sense uh, as we proceed. So when I'm starting putting the white you will see that I'm carefully going around the edges of the rocks. It doesn't matter if you get a little bit of color inside the rocks you can always paint over it but I'm just going around the rocks and putting in white or I'm putting some white on the top and dragging them down and there is no need to worry ab uh, about blending the colors right because um, you will see that when we proceed further along into this painting all of those streak marks actually make more sense they actually give you the feel of the waterfall because the waterfall is falling down and it has some amount of lines in it so these sketchy lines actually will make a lot of sense it will actually look good so uh, no need to kind of blend it evenly just make sure all the brush strokes are going from up to down or down to up do not put the brush strokes sideways because you want to create the um, lines from up to down just like a waterfall would be not side to side when then the entire uh, the painting will not look very good so just keep the lines from going from up to down or down to up and rest of it is just fine now you will see me adding some more darker colors onto the background and after that i'll start on to the rocks in the foreground for the rocks in the foreground um, I'm making a very muddy mix of all the colors that I have put in the background so it doesn't really matter you will see that I'll use the same um, uh, colors like purple, raw umber, burnt umber, whatever kind of brown you have, a little bit of black, blue, green, all of those colors that I've used in the background I'm using, I'll make a muddy mix of those in for the foreground as well. 
um, I'm adding some more white. In fact, I'll keep on adding a lot of white from time to time and uh, keep adjusting the waterfall till it feels like it looks like a waterfall. And uh, it probably would not get the feel till the very end of the painting, till the rocks are being put into place, till you create the splatter effect and all of that stuff. But you still can understand, okay, this is the area where the wa water is falling. And that's, that's the aim. That's the goal. Uh, what is looking pleasing to your eyes and remember on the area at the very bottom where the rocks meet the waterfall uh, ideally the water is splashing on the rocks uh, falling on the rocks and splashing up so that there will be a lot of white and foam creating in um, there's a water, water splatter and foam created by that splashing so make that area a little bit whiter so around the rocks just make it a little bit whiter than the rest of the area now on to the rocks in the front. You see that I've uh, painted a muddy mix of uh, purple and brown, added to a little bit of black. It doesn't really matter what color you put because you will layer a lot of colors here. And once again, this is probably the only painting that I have done that I'm not worrying about blending at all because rocks are not smooth. Yes. So you want those textures, those brush strokes to stay. And you will also see that I'm also not trying to get one even color all over the place because yes rocks are not also of the same color they can be of different colors and also because of the light and shadow effect they will look different in different areas some of the areas because of the shadows will have darker purples and blues some of the um, areas of shadows will have more of brown and black and that's perfectly fine so it just um, keep kind of uh, readjusting the colors to what pleases your eyes and then I'm adding a little purple gray color in between the rocks to kind of give a suggestion where the water is flowing you want to give the water a path that this is the area from where the water is flowing so you want to guide um, the viewers attention and also create a lot of movement in the painting that kind of gives um, a painting a very complete look for lack of a better word so now i'm putting on a mixture of uh, yellow and red so necessarily orange on top of the rocks and this kind of gives you the suggestion of light falling in those uh, top areas so some of the areas that are orange uh, and you'll see that initially this orange does not really show up very well on top of the purple colors that's because orange is made out of yellow and red both of which are pretty transparent colors so they're not showing up very well so i mixed in a little bit of white to it which made it a very bright orange whitish orange and uh, that is not the color i'm going for eventually so i'll let that uh, bright or light color dry and once it's dry and go i'll go over and glaze with the darker colors of red and brown just like i said i'm glazing those very light areas over with uh, darker uh, shades of reds and browns and then i'll kind of blend uh, from the dark light to the dark so the reds and oranges will fade into browns and the browns into purples and uh, darker areas so that's the key element to keep some of the lighter areas really light so that the darker areas create a very nice contrast between the light and the dark and that's the look that I'm going for. The, um, this uh, video has been exceptionally long. I've uh, I meaningfully made it very long and very detailed and I'm going over every step of the process little by little so that you can follow along it would still probably be a little bit too fast for some of the you know, some of you who are absolute beginners but no need to worry about that YouTube has a setting where you can slow it down up to two times uh, so just use that setting and pause uh, whenever you need to pause and uh, that ways you can create your own painting 
uh, very easily this is a very very easy painting because you don't have to worry about blending you don't have to you can leave the textural elements and uh, for that matter i think once uh, i finish this waterfall it itself it looks like a very nice pretty painting i almost didn't want to paint the couple on top of it because i didn't want to lose the elements of the uh, waterfall and the rock and i probably make another waterfall painting just to make myself happy so yes that's an option too if you are catching it after valentine's day or if you're not into painting couples or silhouettes at all then you can just start to skip the entire thing altogether and just go with the waterfall landscape i think it has a very nice feel of a combination of uh, realism and impressionism and abstract i've not really stayed true to any particular style i have just uh, just uh, put into action what my visual mental mental vision was so yes and some areas would look impressionistic some areas kind of abstract and there is also kind of idea about realism because they do look like a waterfall and rock so whatever direction you want to take it you want to make it more realistic you can go that way you want to make it more impressionistic you can go that way you can want to make it even more abstract you can go that way too so that itself makes a very a nice painting as you can see i'm going over the darker areas many times because the darker colors i'm not using a lot of black i'm trying to make it make the areas dark using purple blue and brown or rather raw amber mostly so i have to go over many times to make those colors really stand out or make the contrast really sharpen now i'm taking a bristle brush a round bristle brush and i am dabbing on a mix of uh, of white mixed with a little bit of uh, uh, blue any sort of blue will do i had a greenish blue on my palette that would do any sort of blue will work it, it doesn't really matter and i'm kind of dabbing this color all over the place and then i'm going to blend it out a little bit not a lot like i want this dabbing effect to be there because i want to create the effect of the fumes or foam uh, that kind of happens when the water splash splashes on the rocks it kind of creates an effect of uh, like a smoky look that's what i'm going for so it's kind of like creating clouds and uh, smoky clouds so that's what i'm going for you can see that i'm even flicking my brush sideways um, diagonally so that kind of gives um, a little bit more texture to the painting and a little bit more visual um differences a lot of elements that kind of uh, you can associate with waterfalls and i'm i am really sorry when my hair really comes in between i hope that could, does not cause too much of a distraction that was definitely not intended but i wanted the painting uh, or the camera to be focused as close as possible to the um canvas and that's why this happened i'll i'll be more careful uh, next time on anyway so i can see that i'm uh, making some of this whiter areas more white now i'm diluting my white paint a little bit with water and then creating this splatter effect so you have to take a lot of paint on the bristle brush and then you strike it with another brush alternately you can also use your fingertips or thumb or any finger and flick the paint on top of it and do flick a lot of white paint because at this point because it's wet it's showing up a lot but once the paint dries because it's mixed with a lot of water it will dry up and half of it will vanish the very small splatters will vanish so you want to create a lot of splatter to indicate the water splatter look very nicely so you can see i'm now showing the uh, how you flick on the canvas make sure you pull the bristle brushes towards you and not away from you otherwise you will splatter yourself with paint into instead of the splatters going onto the canvas surface so add a lot and lot and lot of splatters of the white and there we have the background ready now you don't have to do this exact background for the couple painting you i have a couple of other ideas for backgrounds as well i'll just show you in a sec let me get those for you you can put uh, this 
uh, painting as a background I have those paintings linked in the video description below so you have to take the face out and just put the moon and the water and you can put um, the couple in the place where the face is or you can move the entire painting to the side and on the other side you can put the couple now you can also do this background um, take this uh, again take the ballerina figure out and you just have a moon in the sky make the moon smaller or bigger or half moon or half uh, hidden in the mo um, sky whatever your heart pleases that would be an idea too or alternately you could just not do any landscape or anything for that matter and just have a model simple model background just mush some colors together i have all of these videos linked in the video description below so you can check them out if you don't want to do this waterfall background uh, for the couple painting and want to try some other kind of background i'm i'm pretty sure all of these backgrounds will look pretty decent now uh, once my paint is completely dry i'm going to trace my couple uh, painting onto the surface because i want uh, very sharp lines because i'm going to paint onto the silhouette and for that uh, what i'm doing is i've drawn it out on a separate sheet of paper and then i am using a uh, graphite paper or transfer paper some people even call it a carbon paper and transferring this onto the surface of the painting i have linked to this uh, traceable in in the video description below so you don't have to do this own drawing if you don't want to you can use the traceable and print it out and use that to transfer onto your painting surface now you see the before i put in the black inside the silhouette I am going around the edges of the figure and painting it with a very um, a, with a purple color you can use a blue too and I have diluted it with a lot of water and using just a little bit of color on it now this is not a step that is at all mandatory in fact a lot of people will think that it doesn't make any sense and it probably doesn't add any value too so you can totally skip it if you want to but I personally feel that if there a little bit of purple shows around the black it kind of helps to diffuse the um, dark black color and helps create a very mystical look that I really want like now I'm just adding in a mix of uh, black so it is predominantly black of course but I am also pulling in some amount of blues and purples into it because I do not like to use straight black so much it often dulls the painting and you will see that I will go over these areas that are black twice or thrice with the black mix because it's important to get a very dark uh, silhouette to for the painting to look nice uh, because it uh, that's the uh, element of the painting that will stand out it's covering a lot of the area so it better be really dark really sharp now the last bit of the painting is that little cloth kind of thing the wheel kind of thing hanging down from the uh, lady's neck so you, I would keep it transparent you could paint that black too but I thought that keeping it transparent uh, kind of really added a nice element so what I'm doing is I'm going over these lines the top lines with purple and the bottom lines I'll come back with blue and I'm smudging uh, once I put the color on the surface I'm smudging the edges and making them blend in to the background color so that kind of creates that um, flowy look transparent look and I, I think that really gave gives this painting a nice element but if you don't want to do that you don't have to do that you can just outline it with black you can just outline it with uh, uh, you can just fill the entire area with black too or you can just skip the wheel altogether if it doesn't appeal to you that would work as well like I said the bottom side I'm putting a little bit of blue uh, and then smudging it at the out and kind of blending it with the background with that we come to the end of this painting and uh, let me know if you like this painting if you like this painting give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends who would also like to do some painting of this kind because sharing is caring and i hope you have a great valentine's day if you choose to paint this or just watch this uh, that's great too let me know what your thoughts are would you like to see some more paintings of this sort did you like it um 
the length of this painting did that work out for you whatever you let me know that would be very very helpful so share your thoughts in the comments and if you're not already subscribed do consider hitting the subscription button and also the notification bell because as soon as you hit the notification bell that will send you a notification every time uh, i post a new video which is twice a week generally on wednesdays and fridays so i'll see you soon thank you